I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 60. Let's focus on verses 9 through 12. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who has cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Today's psalm is known as a mictum of David for teaching, when Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. You know, God is so gracious, so gracious to us. In addition to giving us the theology of the Psalms, he also provides context by telling us where in the Bible we can reference the accounts from which these Psalms were written. And we find the battle's account in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verses 13 through 15. And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered judgment and justice to all of his people. When we combine the narrative of 2 Samuel chapter 8 with David's testimony here in Psalm 60, we get a richer understanding of what went on. Sure, David was ultimately victorious, but not without struggle and doubt. We began Psalm 60 in trouble. Psalm 60 verse 1, O God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. O restore us again. The campaign of battles against the Philistines and Moabites and Edomites which did not begin victoriously, began shortly after David assumed the throne. David was in the midst of great opposition, not just from foreigners. There was also a massive anti-David campaign within his own kingdom. And this division stemmed from Saul's extended pursuit of David. The people were sour on David because for so many years they had heard that David was an evil guy that needed to be eliminated and now he's our king? You know, political spin doctors aren't new to our generation. They've been going on forever. And if we can't beat the man in an election, well, let's just go ahead and assassinate his character so that when he gets elected, then he can't get anything done because the people are against him. Now David felt that God was against him. David must have been perplexed as to why victory was so difficult to achieve, especially because Earlier, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, God made a covenant with David, saying that he would establish David's house forever. Remember this in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever." So today we learn three things. First, battles are not for passive men. If you're going to fight battles, you better be tough. Secondly, even though kingdom success is God's doing, he still chooses men to lead the charge. And lastly, until Jesus, the son of David, returns, the kingdom will remain somewhat unstable and continually under attack while it's under human leadership. We don't need good leaders. We need godly leaders. Godly leaders are men who seek the Lord and allow Him to lead them so that they can lead the people. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. 
Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like yourself. And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Thank you for giving to Groundworks. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today if you aren't already? Because we need your monthly support now more than ever. And donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. Here's another way you can help. Tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with your friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com.